Not all pictures tell a thousand words. This one tells so many more. We'll never exactly know, but it's also probably worth about $20 million. That's the speculated amount Prince Andrew will pay Virginia Dufre to settle a legal case she brought against him. She says when she was 17, she was trafficked to the prince by the pedophile businessman Jeffrey Epstein, ably assisted by his sex offender partner, Ghislaine Maxwell. Despite the photograph, Andrew has always denied ever meeting, let alone having sex with Miss Dufre. But he's been so discredited, these days it's difficult to believe anything the disgraced royal says. The downfall of a duke stripped of every military title given by his mother and no longer known as HRH, the Queen casts out her favourite son. It's the photograph that brought down a prince. From the investigations that we've done, you can't prove whether or not that photograph is uh, faked or not. Prince Andrew happily posing with Virginia Dufre, who was then just 17. This is a real photo. And that was the first time you met him? And that's the very first time I met him. And that's right before I was abused by him. It is the crucial evidence in the civil suit Virginia has brought against the prince, accusing him of sexual abuse on three separate occasions. When you learnt, you know, after the first time that it was to happen a second time and then it was to happen a third time, what was your reaction to that? Disgusted every time. Just absolutely disgusted. I have no recollection of ever meeting this lady. But others do. Virginia's former boyfriend now speaks out against Prince Andrew. I, I didn't think it was like royalty included in any of this. And then when I heard that, <laughs> How much bigger can you get than that? Prince Andrew, hours ago, agreed to a settlement. Then, the shock announcement. There is no admission of liability by the Duke. From denial to capitulation. Prince Andrew regrets his association with Epstein and commends the bravery of Miss Dufre and other survivors. The Prince abandons the legal fight. In terms of the funding, around 12 million pounds. Opting to pay out rather than show up in court. I actually would have expected him to try to settle before we brought the litigation. And we were on the inside in the final hours as the finer details of this momentous negotiation were hammered out. I knew it was not going to be an easy road. He has uh, very good lawyers uh, and a lot of resources. But not enough to protect him from palace sources. Now prepared to expose the real Prince Andrew. Did uh, Prince Andrew have a nickname at that time? It was called the As Virginia Dufre first told us in 2019, she would never have met the Duke of York if it was not for his close friends, convicted sex offenders Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Targeted by Maxwell in 1999, the troubled runaway was offered a job and the promise of training to become a professional masseuse. Unaware of the trap set for her, Virginia agreed, with the help of Maxwell, to do a trial massage on Epstein. That's when I was instructed to, um, to, that's when I was instructed to um, get undressed and, um, and have sex with Jeffrey Epstein while Gielan Maxwell was participating as well. You want to take a moment? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. So you were abused by both of them in your very first encounter? Yeah, both of them. I was abused by Gielan and Epstein and it broke my heart. I I don't mean to sound sexist in any way, shape, or form, but I, I expected it from a man, but I didn't expect it from a woman. I couldn't imagine um, putting someone through what she put me through. And, um, yeah, I think that's what hurts the most. Happy New Year. Do you know Virginia? 
can you at least say if she's been in your house? In late December last year, Glenn Maxwell was convicted of recruiting and grooming teenage girls to have sex with her former boyfriend, the disgraced and now dead billionaire financier, Jeffrey Epstein. Guilty of While her appeal will be heard in a few months, Maxwell faces the rest of her life in jail for her role, which included the trafficking of a minor. When we started out, uh, our goal was really to attack the evil of sex trafficking, to try to stop uh, Epstein and, and Maxwell. It's a case that has a touch of David versus Goliath, where in this instance, the unlikely underdog is David Boys, Virginia's formidable US attorney. This time, the experienced litigator was taking on the power and wealth of not only the Epstein and Maxwell double act, but also the British royal family. At the time of this interview, last Tuesday, David was preparing his deposition of Prince Andrew, set down for early March. The Duke is the first royal to come under such legal glare. And so do you feel the weight of that? I mean, this is quite a historical moment. In, in a sense, um, but I've deposed a lot of historical figures, uh, whether it's Bill Gates or senators or cabinet members, billionaires, captains of industry. So adding a royal to your list <laughs> doesn't uh, frighten you in any way or intimidate you in any way? Well, it doesn't, it do, it doesn't frighten or intimidate me because... Um, I get to ask the questions. But David's questions will remain unanswered, with the prince dodging the interrogation by settling the case. Serious and deeply disturbing allegations remain. Virginia says she was trafficked to many men, but the prince was the most high profile. How did you learn that you were going to be trafficked to him? I, you know, was woken up by Ghislaine in the morning and told I was going to meet a prince, and up till then I didn't even, I should have known, but I didn't even know that I was going to be trafficked that night to him. And um, we went shopping and and Prince Andrew came over and then we went to Club Tramp and he danced with me and he, he's a horrific dancer, by the way, and he sweats a lot and he smells funny. Um, and then... He, and then we get in the car, and Andrew's not in the car with us. He's in the car behind us with his security guards. And um, Gillen tells me in the car that I have to do what I do for Jeffrey for Prince Andrew. And that's when I learned what was going to happen. First in London at Maxwell's townhouse, then New York at the Epstein mansion, and finally, on Epstein's Caribbean island, Virginia says she was nothing more to the prince than a sexual plaything. I was lower than a dog to them, you know? I, was, I wasn't even a puppy to be played with. I was just a toy. You're not even acknowledged as being alive or there or important or, or cared for or worried about in any way. None of those human emotions were attached to, to me when I was trafficked to Prince Andrew. In the growing chorus against Prince Andrew's denials comes Tony Figueroa, Virginia's boyfriend at the time, a high school sweetheart who shared a house with the 17-year-old. He was well aware of her routine, two weeks at home with him and two weeks away with Jeffrey Epstein. When the scheduled call came from Epstein, Tony says Virginia had no choice but to go. Was there an element of fear? Of course. When one person that powerful knows where you live, like where you sleep, when you see your girlfriend have to leave every two weeks and like when she gets that call, her face like completely switches from, all right, I'm good to like, you know, oh my God, you know, it takes its toll and it gets pretty stressful. Tony remembers one call in particular, but this one came from Virginia herself. She called me, maybe I guess right after, you know, she found out exactly what they wanted her to do. She said she wasn't feeling safe. And I mean, I just told her to do whatever she could to make sure she stayed safe. What did they want her to do? For her to have sex with them. 
with Jeffrey and the Prince. Ever since Virginia went public with her allegations against Prince Andrew, he has vehemently denied them, most memorably on British television in this compelling and cringeworthy interview. There was Prince Andrew's response to Virginia's claim he was sweaty and smelled funny. She described dancing with you no. and you profusely sweating <laughs> and that she went on to have bath, there's a, there's possibly... A, there's a slight problem with, 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 with the sweating um, because uh, I, I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat um, or I didn't sweat at the time and that was... Oh, actually, yes. I didn't sweat at the time because I um, ha had suffered what I would describe as an overdose of adrenaline in the Falklands War when I was shot at. Uh, and I simply, it, it, was, it, was, it was almost impossible for me to, to, to sweat. Then his declaration that on the night Virginia claims he sexually abused her, he was in fact at Pizza Express in Woking with one of his daughters. A very unusual thing for me to do. I've never... Watching all this was attorney David Boys. My understanding was that there ha you have sought some evidence of those claims, evidence that he has a condition that stops him from sweating and evidence that he was at Woking. Has he been able to provide any of that? No, I, you're, you're entirely correct. That is, we served a document demand on him for any documents that would support those assertions. Um, and he does not have any documents. Did you really expect him to have documentary evidence that he doesn't sweat? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, my reaction with, um, with respect to the assertion that he didn't sweat was a little in, incredulity um, and um, a thought that this was probably not a credible ground to stake your reputation on. Uh, with respect to the, the Pizza Express, um, it occurred to me that it would be reckless to make that assertion unless you had some way of proving it. Um, and so we certainly wanted to, uh, wanted to check that out. And so far it doesn't check out? So far it is not checked out. Virginia launched her civil suit against the Prince six months ago. Ever since, he has done his utmost to distance himself from Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell the architects of the sex trafficking web. But as you'll see, Palace staff are now prepared to go on the record, revealing the extent of the relationship between Epstein's madam and Prince Andrew. Myself and my other colleagues, we got the impression um, that they were in some form of intimate relationship. Up until last week, Prince Andrew was defiantly heading to court to fight allegations he sexually abused the teenage Virginia Dufre, having rejected earlier attempts to settle. Both sides were getting ready for a showdown, with Virginia's New York attorney, David Boys, preparing to question the prince under oath. Last Tuesday, David agreed to talk about the trial set for September and hinted something might be afoot. There will be developments that we'll probably want to talk about uh, again soon. Do you have any sense whether the trial may not go ahead at all, but might, might in fact be settled before that trial date? I, I think there's, there's always um, a, a possibility of, of settlement. I think the prospects of, of settlement and negotiation is not something that I can really um, talk about. As, as you appreciate, you can't really try to resolve a case like this in public. Uh, those negotiations uh, have to go on in private. It is now clear those negotiations continued right after our interview finished. Less than 24 hours later, the news broke. Now to the major turn for Britain's Prince Andrew, reaching a settlement with Virginia... Prince Dufresne. Andrew was no longer going to court. Settling out of court for an undisclosed He'd agreed amount. to a settlement, Virginia meeting Virginia Virginia's Dufresne. conditions. Years of denying her claims against him. One of the things that uh, Virginia has said is that in, in addition to uh, an appropriate uh, settlement amount, um, there would have to be recognition uh, by Prince Andrew of inappropriateness of his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. Um, I think that uh, we've said from the beginning 
that there would have to be um, vindication of uh, Virginia. Um, there would have to be a recognition of Virginia as a clear uh, victim of uh, abuse. And there would have to be recognition of the unfair public attacks that have been made against her. Over the past week, the greatest speculation has been over how much the confidential settlement is worth, and ultimately, who will pay for it. We're talking about between 10 and, and 12 million pounds. Now, Andrew's not a very rich man. He has some rich friend, friends who, who I think would be blanch at lending him 12 million pounds, frankly. Um, there's been mention repeatedly in the, in the press that, that, that the Queen is um, bailing him out. Author Nigel Cawthorn, who's investigated the Epstein scandal, says the greatest concern in the UK is that the money, rumoured to be the equivalent of $20 million, will come out of the public purse. As far as I can see, defending your wayward son in a sleazy sex case in a foreign court is not one of Her Majesty's official duties. What would you imagine the Queen said to Prince Andrew? I don't know. I think she would probably addressed him as like, like one of her corgis <laughs> and, and told him to come to heel. The settlement in no way exonerates him uh, at all. You say that the settlement does not exonerate him. In the eyes of the public, do you think it cements their perception that he's guilty? Um, in the court of world public opinion, I think we've all made our minds up, haven't we? I won't stop fighting. I will never be silenced until these people are brought to justice. What do you say to the critics of Virginia who claim that it's a money grab after such a long time? This has never been um, entirely or mostly or even uh, to a very large extent about money. This has been a cause that Virginia has dedicated her life to in terms of bringing attention to the evils of sex trafficking and holding people who engage in sex trafficking to account. Only Prince Andrew can explain his decision to settle. The judge had read that but the conviction in December of his longtime friend, Ghislaine Maxwell, for sex trafficking did not look good for him. He'd been friends with Ghislaine Maxwell for 40 years. Though in his rebuttal in the uh, Gouffre case, he says she's not a close friend. But they're together in Buckingham Palace. They're together in Balmoral. They're in Sandringham. They're together in Ascot. They're not close friends. Do you think he's telling the truth? Certainly, Paul Page, a former royal personal protection officer, witnessed the Prince and Maxwell together many times at Buckingham Palace. Personally, I'd say within uh, over the two years, I'd seen her come in about a dozen times, and she was just waved through. Um, one of my colleagues saw her come in and out four times in one day. For Prince Andrew to say, I hardly knew her, is, is I mean, he's delusional. To myself and my other colleagues, we got the impression um, that they were in some form of intimate relationship. Paul's concern at the time was not so much for Andrew's reputation, but the Queen's, as the palace hosted the daughter of disgraced media tycoon and fraudster, Robert Maxwell. We noticed it was Prince Andrew and Ghislaine Maxwell sitting having a picnic. We said, I, I wonder if the Queen knows who's sitting on her lawn, having a picnic with her son. You know, so uh, we thought it was a bit, if the press got hold of it, it might be an issue. Prince Andrew brought the sex trafficking scandal into the House of Windsor. Now palace staff are pulling back the curtain on the Prince of Weirdness. Why would anyone have 50 or 60 teddy bears on their bed? By settling the civil suit with his accuser, Virginia Dufre, Prince Andrew was surely hoping the stench of scandal surrounding him would go away. Instead, despite making no admissions, the public perception is he's evaded scrutiny. And yet again, some tough questions, according to author Nigel Cawthorn. But once he said, I never met her, I don't know who she is, and there's a picture of the three of them together, he'd just completely blown it. 
For Paul Page, who worked as part of Palace Security for six years, the legal stoush has allowed people to finally see the real Prince Andrew. Did uh, Prince Andrew have a nickname at that time? He did have a nickname, but it's a bit rude for me to tell you one, one I'll tell you, but you're not going to be able to <laughs> air it. It was just called, do you want me to tell you? Yeah. It was called um, Plain and simple, because unfortunately, he upset everyone he come across. He was the most unpopular member of the royal family um, while I was there. He was just rude, arrogant. I mean, his sense of self-entitlement was, was breathtaking. Between 1998 and 2004, Paul says he witnessed appalling behaviour from a man who was used to always getting what he wanted. I just feel that Prince Andrew has got a case to answer on all levels, including bullying. And I, I suffered at the hands of Prince Andrew. Young girls suffered at the hands of Prince Andrew, maids, um, other police officers and members of staff. Um, but none of this has ever been looked into because people were too frightened. Andrew was certainly the prince of good times. There was a constant flow of females uh, visiting Prince Andrew late in the evening, whom we were not privy to their names um, or identity. We obviously thought it was a bit of a boy and the joke was he should have a revolving door in his bedroom. And taking British eccentricity to another level, Paul recounts a tour by a colleague of the prince's bedroom where teddy bears were meticulously placed on his bed. We looked at all the teddy bears on the bed. We thought, OK, a 40-year-old man with about 50 or 60 teddy bears on his bed. All right, fair enough. And then he said, there's a card in that drawer there and showed us the card. It was an eliminated picture of all the teddy bears. And then he explained that if the teddy bears aren't put back in this certain order, Prince Andrew would start shouting and swearing at the mates. The alarm bells were ringing then on that sort of issue of, of you know, why would anyone be that sort of you know, controlling. Why would anyone have 50 or 60 teddy bears on their bed? Well, apparently uh, it was 72 more have come forward, so... <laughs> um... It's behaviour, Paul says, that speaks to the arrogance of someone who didn't have to answer to anyone, whether it was throwing his regal weight around over a misplaced teddy or brazenly visiting known child sex offender Jeffrey Epstein in New York. That trip would have been planned from an office within the Royal Protection Department, they would have contacted the uh, state police or whoever runs protection in, in New York and given them the, the prince's details of where he was staying, his travel arrangements. And obviously it would have come back that it was owned by Jeffrey Epstein, who was a convicted felon. You're saying that the royal household would have been red flagged on this? Yes. They need to know where he's staying, where the nearest police station is, where the nearest hospital is, what teams are going to take turns of looking after him, and all those factors come into play. But who in that household would know? I mean, would Mum and Dad be told about this? Would the Queen know? Again, I, I'm not too sure if there's anyone who's got the, the guts to speak to the Queen about it. I'm pretty sure if the, Queen, if the Queen knew, she would have said no. Paul Page has himself been in trouble with the law, sentenced to jail for six years for investment fraud. But it's his encounters with Prince Andrew that seem to have scarred him most. <clears throat> Knowing the inner workings of the palace, he's convinced for every trip Andrew took, for every time he's accused of being with Virginia, there was someone there who saw it. So if there were witnesses to Prince Andrew being with Virginia Dufresne, why have they not come forward? You're going up against the royal family, so there's a lot of fear amongst ex-police ex officers of coming forward. Is, they've signed non-disclosure agreements as well, so they're worried about that, they're worried about their pensions. There's a lot of people out there with information that are just too frightened to come forward. The journey to justice has been a long one for Virginia Dufresne. She has no shame. She has when we no first met the now Australian resident in 2019, she made clear allegations against Prince Andrew. But the prospect of a member of the royal family ever facing a courtroom seemed a near impossibility. Nobody, nobody who hurt me has taken accountability in any way, shape or form. Everyone that has hurt me has denied it. Since then, Virginia's campaign has seen Prince Andrew stripped of his titles, his privileges and position. Even though he has settled the court case, 
and continues to deny Virginia's claims, few seriously believe he can ever remove the stain of being linked to Epstein and Maxwell's sex trafficking ring. What is the future for Prince Andrew? Well, I, <laughs> I mean, I hate to be facetious about these things, but uh, I mean, the only actually way back publicly uh, is, is that he should he needs to revive his his reputation as a kind of war hero so i guess he should, he should volunteer for the front line in the ukraine right now virginia will most likely carry the scars of battle for the rest of her life but to many especially her attorney david boys in this moment she is triumphant in a war she continues to fight for others how is Virginia holding up, in your opinion? She is holding up remarkably well. She is a uh, great young woman, uh, enormous uh, courage, uh, commitment. It was going to be a cause that was going to subject her to enormous personal attacks. So she went into this with her eyes open, um, and she has persevered. Uh, this is a cause uh, that she believes in. Um, and she is determined to try to prevent what happened to her to happening to other young girls. Because this is not a path you would choose if you didn't feel you had to, is it? This is not a path you would choose. Uh, no, no person would ever take on the um, wealth and power and position of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, Prince Andrew, if they were not convinced not only the rightness of their cause, but of the critical importance of their cause. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.